Hi, in this Jet Smart Filters tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create a visual image filter like this for your taxonomy data source. So in this working example, I have four different classes and then right over here is a listing grid. So when the user can go ahead and click on, let's say standard, it's going to only show the standard ones. And then you can do luxury and it's only going to display luxury. And what's nice about this system is you can toggle in between what they call checkbox and radio. So you can have it where the user can select multiple or just one at a time. So toward the end of the tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can easily toggle in between those two options. So now I'm going to jump into the back end of this WordPress website and show you how I have everything set up. And then I'm going to show you how to create the filter and display it on a page just like this. And here we are on the back end of this website. So I just wanted to show you how everything is structured. So it makes a lot more sense when we start to create this filter. So as you can see right here, I have a custom post type just called cars. And inside of here, I have a whole bunch of different cars. And then we have right here called class. This is a custom taxonomy. And these are the four examples I had right here. The common, intermediate, luxury, and standard. So as you can see right here on the right side, we have 12, 17, 14, 15. So there's actually, uh, you know, listings for each one of these uh, taxonomies. So you're going to want to make sure that you have your taxonomies and your custom post type, whatever it may be. Make sure you have everything tagged correctly before you start doing filters. Because if you don't have anything tied like this already to a taxonomy, you're not going to be able to actually see how filters are working correctly. So now we could jump into JetSmart filters and actually create this filter. And then we create the page last. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and start creating the filter. So what you're going to do is just go underneath JetSmart filters and just click this button right here. It says add new and then give it a name. So in this case, let's just call it image filter. It's going to call it demo. And then what you're going to want to do is click this button right here. It says visual. And then underneath your data source, this is where you're going to choose taxonomy. So that's what that one right here for classes, that's called a taxonomy. So then what you need to do is just underneath taxonomy, just scroll down until you see the one that you want to choose. So in this case, we're going to choose class. And then underneath type, we're going to be choosing image for this tutorial. Uh, you can do color instead if you wanted to just have a regular it's like, kind of like static color instead of an image, you can choose color. But in this case, let's just choose image. And then the behavior, this is what I was saying earlier, is you can have it where your checkbox means multiple select, so the user can select multiple at once, or radio is just one at a time. But let's just go ahead and choose radio first. And then later I'll, I'll cover the checklist part just to kind of cover that feature. And then this is basically where all the magic is going to happen is underneath your options list. This is where you're going to go ahead and click add new and then give it a label. So in this case, we're gonna say economy. And then you're gonna click underneath uh, value right here and choose economy. So it's only gonna be pulling up whatever you have inside of that taxonomy that you already assigned. So you just do that and then you just literally choose an image. So in this case, I already have this little image right here called like economy filter. Now I will recommend Make sure that you go ahead and like size this image down. You can compress it more. You can even make the dimensions smaller if you want. So always keep that in mind. I wouldn't recommend having a very large image here just for like an options. And then you basically just repeat the same process. So the next one is intermediate. So you just type that in right here. And then same thing, you just go ahead and choose an image. So in this case, there's that one. And then I'll just do the next two. Okay, so now I added those two other ones. So now we can go down here and this is all kind of optional. Um, I do like this one right here, uh, the ability to deselect a radio button. So when the user can only click one, you know, with a radio button, you want to have it where they can remove that if, if they don't want to select that button. So that's what's nice about this is they give you an option right here. And then that's really about it for the filter. You're just going to go ahead and hit update. So now what you need to do is jump into a new page and then we need to actually drag that filter into the page and then link it up to like a listing grid. And here we are inside of a new blank Elementor page. And depending on how you have everything structured in your website, you might have your header and footer come in. But what I like to do is go up to the page settings right here and then remove this title. You can click hide title. And then let's go ahead and just create a new simple layout. In this case, I'm just gonna do a structure like this. So we have like a smaller left column and then the bigger one for the listing grid. So let's go and actually add the listing grid first, just so we have some sort of visual. So click and drag that in. And then you just wanna go ahead and choose the listing grid that you already created. So you're gonna have to make sure you already create a listing grid. Let's just do one column like this. So that looks good. Now, this is gonna be the most important part of this tutorial, of course, is pull in a visual 
filter. So just type in the word visual over here and click and drag. So when you do that, it's gonna probably come in really small like this. Uh, one first step is let's go ahead and choose this filter is for, and then let's just choose a jet engine. So what I like to do is publish this page and then we're gonna be doing a lot, a lot of back and forth in between this and the demo. So first, let's just make sure that this works. So when you click each one of these, it's switching right here. So I like to always make sure that this works first before we start to style this up. So now let's go back into the page and let's make it where, you know, everything is a lot bigger because right now it's like really small. So on here underneath content, this is where you can go ahead and show the label if you want. So if you have a case where you just want to show the image, that's where you can turn on and off if you need that label. And then your image size, you're probably going to want to keep it at full. So that's why I recommend upload the opt optimized size first, and then you can use full. So the browser is not going to like render it out, you know, pixelate or anything like that. And then you don't have to worry about any of these right here. Um, you, if you want to have an index for options, you can do that. So if there's like a counter, but in this situation, let's just keep it nice and simple. And let's bring those labels back because I want to show that you could still make this look good even with the labels. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of go down a lot of these and just style it up and make it look like the demo I showed in the beginning of the tutorial. So underneath items, this is where you can go ahead and choose if you want it to be inline or a column. So probably in most cases, if you have it like this, on the left side, you're gonna to wanna to choose column. So that way each one of these is gonna be like its own like column. And then you could choose right here if you want it to be a line left, right, center, but you can see right here, it doesn't really change much of the settings, but let's go ahead and you could choose how much space you want in between right here, but let's just kind of keep it default. So let's just remove that for now. And then we're gonna be changing the size of the image first. So let's go ahead underneath image and let's focus on how big the image needs to be first. So something along these lines right here, my image was like 200, so, 200 might be a little big. Let's just go down a little bit more to like 150 or something, maybe 175. That looks pretty good. And now this is where you can choose the horizontal offset and the vertical offset. So this is where you can change some spacing. So that's why I like to zero this part out right here. And then if you know you're gonna have an image in here, you can do the vertical offset right here. So this is where you can go ahead and choose how much space you want in between each one of these things but something along these lines right here looks good. And then while we're at this point, let's go ahead and actually just give this whole entire filter a white background. Because as you can see, these cars were on a white background and then this is not. So it's gonna look a little bit weird if you don't have it like the same color. So you could just select the widget itself, go underneath advanced and then background. And then let's just give that a white background. So now it all looks like it's, you know, tied together the label and the image. So now we can go ahead and start styling up the labels and the borders and all that stuff. So in order to do that, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you go underneath item right here, and then you can go underneath your typography. So this is where you can go ahead and start to change how big the labels are gonna be. So if you keep something along these lines, like 24 looks good. So of course, this is gonna determine how much space you have on the left and right and everything. But let's just keep it really simple for this tutorial and just keep it at 24. And then let's cover uh, some really simple stuff first. So what's nice about this item feature is there's three different states. There's normal, there's hover. So when you hover over each one of these, you can make it do something. And then when the user uh, checks something or clicks on one of these, that's what checked is. So let's go ahead and keep it really simple right now. And let's say on hover, you can go underneath color and let's give it the accent. So now when you hover over each one of these, you're gonna see that it's gonna have this little green come over from the text label, which is Pretty cool, so the user knows that they're hovering over something. Now what we need to do is underneath checked, this is where you can go ahead and give the border a different color. So when you check one of these, you can see that nothing's happening right here, and that's because this border width, if you go back into the normal state, it's at zero. So if I hit one right here, let me hit update on this, and then let's go to the front end. When I hit refresh, when I hover over, the green text is working, and you can see that now it has a little bit of border right here, and then when I click on it, it has the green border when I click on each one. Now this border width right here is gonna carry over to all the different states. So let me show you what that means. So if I, let's say, say two, you can see that on hover it's got two, and on checked it's got two. 
So if you want to have it where there's no border, let's say on the normal state, what you need to do is underneath where it says border color right here, you need to make it transparent. So what you can do is underneath border color, the slider right down here, just make it where this border is transparent because this value is getting passed down to the hover and check state. So let me show you what that means. So if I hit update, now on the normal state, this little gray text border or this little border right here is going to disappear. So if I hit refresh, it disappears, but the border is going to show when you click on each item. So yeah, just to recap, this value for the border width is going to get passed down. You can see it gets two and two. So if you ever need it where you don't want to have a border, that's how you're going to have to pull this off is to do a transparent color on that border. And then you want to make sure underneath your uh, color and image right here settings that you don't have a border on this. So let me show you what happens if you have a border right here and let's say solid and you choose one right here border width. So if you don't have text and you just have the um, image, this is where you can go ahead and change that border. So as you can see, when I click on here, there's like a second border around just the image. So if you get it like double bordered, that's where you can go ahead and actually disable this. You can hit zero here or just hit none underneath this state right here. And like I said in the beginning of the tutorial, you can also have the option where the user can select multiple uh, items instead of just one. So what you do is you just go back into your Jet Smart filters and instead of behavior as radio, you could just do checkbox. And then right down here, you can just keep all these by default. And let's go ahead and hit update. So now when you refresh the page, you don't have to do anything else on the page. The user can now click multiple uh, items right here. So you can see right here, they can choose multiple items. And then if you get something like this, where you have like a double border, you can go ahead and you know kind of easily change that right here. So let's go into the back end, hit refresh. And what you can do is go underneath your item setting right here. And if you remember, we have the border as just like a two pixel top, right, bottom, left. Um, what you can easily do is just untoggle this right here. So the links aren't going to be all together as like one value. And then what you could do is just make the top one pixel and the bottom one pixel. Because it's, what it's doing is when you select each one of these, it's adding two pixels to the top and bottom, making it four in between. So that's why there's like that weird double border when you select. So you could just do something like that. So now when you go in between each one, you can see we don't have like that double border. And so yeah, you can easily change the colors of these things and anything along those lines, you know, just within these settings right here. And that's it for this Jet Smart Filters tutorial on how to create a visual image filter like this for your listing grid. Thank you for watching.